This PowerPoint presentation covers Chapter 14, Acid-Base Equilibria, for Section 14.1. In this section, we'll be looking at the definitions of acids and bases. Before watching this video, make sure that you have completed the Reading Guide Section 14.1. Also, have your copy of the Chapter 14 handouts ready to take notes on as we work through this section. It's important to know the names of the chemicals that you use. Acids and bases are some of the most common reagents used in chemical laboratories and in everyday life, so you need to learn their names. This slide shows a list of common acids. You need to memorize their names and formulas. You also need to memorize which of these are strong acids. There are eight in this table. If you have already memorized the list of polyatomic ions, memorizing the acids shouldn't be too hard. For all of the negatively charged polyatomic ions, you will add a number of H pluses to the beginning of the formula in order to achieve a neutral compound. For example, the phosphate ion has the formula PO4 3 minus. Since this has a minus 3 charge, we'll need to add 3 H pluses to get the neutral acid. This gives us the formula H3PO4, which is the formula for phosphoric acid. The acid names also have a pattern. Acids that do not contain oxygen in their formula all have names that start with hydro. For example, HCl is hydrochloric acid. Acids whose anions contain oxygen don't start their names with hydro. For these, you take the name of the polyatomic ion and change any eight endings to ic and any it endings to us. For example, the perchlorate ion has the formula ClO4 minus, and its acid is perchloric acid. Again, the eight became an ick. Nitrite, on the other hand, the NO2 minus ion, its acid is HNO2, and this is called nitrous acid. Again, the I ending became us. Let's review some common properties of acids and bases. Acids in general have a sour taste. For example, acetic acid is the acid that gives vinegar its sour taste. Acids can also dissolve many metals. We'll look at reactions later in the chapter of acids neutralizing bases. We'll also see several examples of what are called indicators. For example, litmus paper is a type of indicator that changes color depending on whether it's in an acid or base solution. Acids will turn litmus to the red color. Phenolphthalein is another indicator that you may have seen in your Chem 50 class. This is what we used when we did the titration. And acids will make phenolphthalein into its colorless form. What are some examples of acids? We saw some in the previous slide. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, etc. Let's look at the structures of some of these acids. First, we have HCl, or hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is an example of a halo acid formed from one of the halogens. Pure HCl is actually a gas at room temperature and is called hydrogen chloride. There is a covalent bond between the hydrogen atom and the chloride atom, sorry, the chlorine atom. Recall that covalent bonds are formed when atoms share electron pairs. When HCl dissolves in water, however, 
The molecule breaks apart into two ions, H plus and chloride, and we call it hydrochloric acid. Sulfuric acid is an example of an oxy acid. It has oxygens in its anion. Sulfuric acid is formed from the sulfate ion and two hydronium ions. Again, technically speaking, H2SO4 would be called hydrogen sulfate. However, we almost always encounter it as an aqueous solution, in which case we call it sulfuric acid. Notice the position of the hydrogens in this structure. They are bonded to the oxygen atoms. This is typical for the oxy acids. Nitric acid is another oxy acid with the formula HNO3. Again, the hydrogen is attached to one of the oxygens. Acetic acid is an example of an organic carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids share the feature of having this functional group, C double bonded to O, then bonded to an OH group. Again, the acidic hydrogen is the one attached to the oxygen atom. There are actually multiple hydrogens in this structure, but only the hydrogen attached to the oxygen is actually acidic. The hydrogens attached to the carbon do not dissociate in water to form H plus ions. What about the bases? Bases have, on the other hand, a bitter taste and will often feel slippery. Bases will neutralize acids and turn red litmus paper to blue or make phenolphthalein have its pink color. There are several classes of bases. Metal hydroxide compounds, like sodium hydroxide, are strong bases. Compounds containing nitrogen atoms with lone pairs of electrons are called amine bases. Ammonia is an example of an amine base. Notice the lone pair electrons on the nitrogen atom. Dimethylamine is another example of an amine type base. We'll also see many examples of bases that are negatively charged ions, like the bicarbonate ion. There are three common definitions for acids and bases, the Arrhenius definition, the Bronsted-Lowry definition, and the Lewis definition. The Arrhenius definition defines an acid as a species that will produce H plus in water. We've already seen that HCl is an acid. When HCl gas dissolves in water, it forms H plus and chloride. So again, we see that HCl is an Arrhenius acid because it produces the H plus species in water. An Arrhenius base, on the other hand, is a species that produces the hydroxide ion in water. Sodium hydroxide in its pure form is actually a solid. When it dissolves in water, because it's an ionic compound, it splits apart into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So again, we see the production of the hydroxide ion indicating that this is an Arrhenius base.
The Bronsted-Lowry definition is actually the one that we will be mainly using in this chapter. In the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor. A proton is just another name for H+. If we return to our example of hydrochloric acid, how do we show it acting as a proton donor? We write the equation slightly differently. We have the HCl and we have it or show it reacting with water. In this reaction, HCl, our acid, is going to be donating a proton to a base in the system, in this case water. So water is our proton acceptor. In the Bronsted-Lowry definition, a base, on the other hand, is something that accepts a proton. In order for a species to accept a proton, it must have a lone pair of electrons that it can use to make a bond with the H+. Ammonia is a typical base. How do we show it acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base? We show that it accepts a proton, in this case, from water. So here we have ammonia as our proton acceptor and water as our proton donor. Notice what happens to the products of this reaction. Since NH3 is accepting a proton, it becomes NH4+. In other words, we've added a proton to it. What happens to the water? When we take away a proton from water, we end up with the hydroxide ion. So ammonia is both a Bronsted-Lowry base as well as an Arrhenius base because its reaction with water forms the hydroxide ion. Notice that in the case of the HCl reaction, we showed water acting as a proton acceptor, in other words, as a base. On the other hand, in the ammonia reaction, we showed water acting as a proton donor, or an acid. When one chemical species can act as either an acid or a base, we call it amphiprotic. Another thing to keep in mind is that we have two ways of writing a proton in water. Sometimes we write it as H plus aqueous, and sometimes we write it as H3O plus aqueous. These are equivalent chemical species and are written as interchangeably. Sometimes we show the attached water when we need to show it balance a chemical equation, and sometimes we leave out the attached water for simplicity. Finally, we have our Lewis definition. In the Lewis definition, an acid is an electron pair acceptor, and a base is an electron pair donor. We will talk more about the Lewis definition of acids and bases when we get to coordination compounds. We will mainly be using the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases in this chapter. We can write a generic expression for a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction as HA plus B goes to A minus and HB plus. We'll use HA as a generic symbol for a weak acid, and B will represent our generic weak base. Since acids donate protons and bases accept them, the HA is going to transfer its proton to the base B. After we take the proton from HA, we're left with A minus. When we add the proton to B, we form HB plus. If HA is a weak acid and B is a weak base, we show this reaction with a double arrow to indicate that the reaction does not go to completion but reaches an equilibrium. <laughs>
Notice also that the chemical species HA and A- are related to each other. A- is just like HA, except it has its H plus removed. We call species that differ only by a proton conjugate acid-base pairs. So HA and A- are a conjugate acid-base pair, as are B and HB+. Using real chemical examples, what is the conjugate acid of the carbonate ion? In order to form the conjugate acid of a species, you need to add H+. So the conjugate acid of carbonate is hydrogen carbonate. Notice that we've added an H to the front of the formula, and the charge has also changed. Carbonate is 2 minus, but adding an H plus reduces the amount of negative charge to just 1 minus. What is the conjugate base of the acid nitrous acid? To form the conjugate base, you have to remove H plus. So when we take H plus away from HNO2, we get NO2 minus. Notice that the H is gone and the charge has become more negative. After watching this video, you should be ready to work on group problems one and two from the group work packet.